my presentation is about from Spring Boot to Kubernetes. It was a long, long journey. I was working on this project for the last year, and I want to share with you about all the things that we learned uh, so far. Uh, my name is Mauricio Salatino, as uh, Bob mentioned, and I do work for a company called Alfresco that does content management and process management. Uh, my nickname is Salavo in the community. That's my GitHub user ID. And I'm currently the tech lead of an open source project at, called Activity Cloud. We are building cloud-native business automation, which is basically a set of tools to speed up how do you build business stuff uh, on, inside, on top of Spring Cloud, using Docker, and targeting Kubernetes, our main deployment infrastructure. So as I was saying before, this has been a long journey. It wasn't been that easy. And I don't know if you guys know this band. This is an American band from the 70s called Journey. If you go to their Wikipedia page, it's one of the most hated and the most beloved bands from the 70s, which is kind of like amazing. It's hated and beloved. That's how I feel after this journey. So we started building Spring Boot services, right? And Spring Boot is great because it gives you all the things that you need in order to build a service. But all the other things that are around the Spring Boot are the things that are complicated. If you have databases, message brokers, infrastructure that you need to set up, how do you do that? So you need to start playing up with stuff like Docker Compose to start all the services and get your stuff up and running. And then you need to start thinking about how you're going to publish your service as a Docker container, right? as a Docker image. Where are you going to publish it? How are you going to build it? How Java plays inside containers and all that stuff. When you step back a little bit and try to build more than one service, you definitely need to start looking into the cloud-native approach. right? How do you build multiple services in a resilient way? These three books are kind of amazing. One from the theoretical background, the other one more practical on a Spring Boot and a Spring Cloud, and the other one uh, about patterns. And then you look into Spring Cloud. If you go to the Spring Cloud side, you will see that they have a lot of components in there. Uh, but you can pick and choose. But in reality, if you go seriously cloud native, you are going to use most of them. And then provide great abstractions to build cloud native applications. If you see an example that I have here, this is pretty much similar to what we have in our project. You have uh, JHipster. They are using all these concepts to build applications, like you have a gateway, you have a service registry, you have a configuration server, monitoring and security, and then your business logic in there. And if you want to bootstrap all this stuff again, Docker Compose, you can start with that. But as you can see, the octopus here, it's already confused, right? You have too many containers to deal with, and you will be able to start them, but not manage them using Docker Compose. So the next logical step, if you are targeting Kubernetes, is to look into Minikube. So you can have one single node cluster installed in a VM in your laptop. That sounds like a good idea if you want to learn the concepts. So you definitely need to learn about what the service is in Kubernetes, what the deployment is, what the replica set is. Uh, but the real thing is a real cluster running on-premise or in the public cloud, right? And PKS definitely helps there. I totally recommend you that. If you start with Kubernetes, start with the real cluster, because that's where your applications will run at the end of the day. And then, if you start thinking about it, you have, we have a Spring Cloud running inside Kubernetes. And that might get a little bit tricky. There is some overlap. If you start looking into more details, you will see that before you had Eureka, now you have the Kubernetes Service Registry. So there is some overlap, and your developers need to understand how to fix that. Luckily for us, we have projects like Spring Cloud Kubernetes that basically implement some of these services, like the abstractions in Spring Cloud, to consume uh, Kubernetes services out of the box. I've been participating with this project for the, la the last year, and it has been amazing. So I totally recommend you to take a look at that. And then you will find tools coming out like almost every day, like PKS and JenkinsX. JenkinsX is one tool that I love because it's based on conventions. And it basically allows you to get your Spring Boot application and have it up and running in a Kubernetes cluster in almost no time. What they do is they uh, glue all these technologies together, right? So you will need a pipeline in order to move your code to a Docker image, to a Helm chart, and to be deployed in the Kubernetes cluster. And it integrates with all these tools in order to simplify your life, basically. Again, it, it's taking conventions from the Kubernetes community, right? And it's automatically creating this stuff for you, right? So the only thing that you need to have is a Spring Boot application or a Go application or anything that you want to deploy into Kubernetes. And they use this GitSoap approach, which basically allows you to have all the environments in, in different Git repositories. Installing Jenkins X is extremely easy. Five steps, you install the CLI. Then you log into your cluster, you install the services in there, and then you just import your Spring Boot application, and voila, you go from code to something that runs inside your Kubernetes cluster in no time. So summing up, we have learned a lot during this last year. Uh, we are trying to share as much as we can about this learning process, because we know that most of us uh, are solving the same problems. We are collaborating with the Spring. We are collaborating with Jenkins X. We are collaborating with PKS. And if you are interested in these topics, we are doing a presentation on Thursday, 10.30 AM, about the Spring Cloud on PKS, where we will expand on these topics. And thank you very much. That was my presentation.